During the Meiji era modernization, many things and ideas arrived from the West. They were usually introduced in a clever way so that the total remained indisputable Japan. Hints from foreign culture were skillfully utilized in traditional Japanese tools and designs. The energy and creative imagination was amazing. Looking at the films and the reading books from the time has told me how important it is to live your life in many things that really suit you. When you first come in contact with the world of the tea ceremony or no or kabuki, it is the opposite way around. You feel nervous and wants to keep your distance. It is unfortunate that such a gap has opened up in place of a traditional closeness. Even Japanese people who do not feel particularly nervous about Western aristocratic culture or classical music concept and put themselves on guard when it comes to traditional Japanese culture, as if they were about to scold it. Perhaps the reason is that while everyone just started from the knowing nothing about Western things, there is an obsession that you were supposed to know already about the Japanese culture. Maybe this is related to the great changes Japan underwent after the war. Once traditional culture had been denounced and removed from everyday life, and the city streets were dramatically transformed and daily life too changed in a big way, looking away detachment, some things that used to be part of life seems to entail a lot of unnecessary hesitation and stiffness. Most of Japanese art is what would be called craft in the West, tools, fixtures, and other objects that, that were part of daily life. I'm sure people felt very close to them. They were not reserved for the wealthy, but anyone with just a little bit of spare cash they could buy one for their home as a modest luxury. In this way, they could enjoy the pleasure of living with us and laying their cheek against it uh, to look at it very closely. I don't think I would ever want to look at an oil paintings from so close that I could love my tickets against that. But in front of the Japanese painting, I sometimes get a desire to approach it really cross so that I can feel it. I noticed then that it isn't just an overflow beauty that is important in Japanese art, but even more so the beauty of the various parts. I'm especially fascinated by the colors and the pigments used in Japanese paintings. I really look at the, the full painting, but as I got closer to the depicted object, I was often captivated by its disposition or how the pigment reflected the light. And I realized what the great lords these are meant to praise. 